Anna again, and here we are. Um, last Sunday, we had Miss Anna or Miss Sherry Ann, and she did a wonderful concert for us, and for some reason, this just wouldn't work. So we decided to hold off and do this lesson this week. Oh my goodness, that was kind of loud, wasn't it? I'm just going to turn this down a smidgen. So, welcome boys and girls, welcome to, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true, and it is true, boys and girls. I'm so glad to be here with you today, and let's open up with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, help us to really listen to the stories, read your word, and really put it into practice, what you're trying to tell us to do. Lord, help us with our attitudes. Don't let us be a stink bug. Lord, help us to do the right thing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, boys and girls, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. And let's listen to Skittles. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. What's up, everybody? It's me. what's up is for today. And that's what our lesson is about today. Hmm. I wonder if you can figure out before we get into it, who the complainers were. Let's listen. I know it sounds crazy, but if you drop milk and strawberries from the top of a building, you will not get a strawberry milkshake. <laughs> I know this sounds crazy, but with the help of gravity, you can make a fruit salad. I know it sounds crazy, but the inside of the toaster looks like this. I know it sounds crazy, but grandmothers cannot fly. Don't even think about it, shut up, boy. Ow! Ow! Really bad. I bet you're wondering, why are we talking about stuff falling from the sky? Well, we hear stuff falls from the sky all the time, even in the Bible. We hear stuff falls from the sky, and today we're going to tell you all about it. Today, yawn! I know it sounds crazy, but it's true! Yeah, 
shake my hand. He sings songs I don't even like. Man, he preaches way too long. All of these things may be true, but they come from a complaining spirit and a bad attitude. Today, we're going to look at another amazing Bible story that you've probably never heard. It's found in Numbers chapter 16. Yes, I said Numbers chapter 16. And whenever you hear this story, you're going to say, oh, it sounds crazy. And I'm going to say, yes, I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Very, very true. And it teaches us about the dangers of complaining. No more complaining. Hallelujah, no complaining. Woo! I know it sounds crazy, but it's true. Boys and girls, in God's word, the book of Numbers. Numbers is found in the Old Testament. It goes Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers. It's the fourth book in the Bible. And in the book of Numbers, chapter 16, we read about one of the wildest stories ever told. Moses was the leader that God appointed over his people, the Israelites. And boys and girls, if you remember, Moses led his people out of Egypt. He parted the Red Sea for them, and they were headed to the land that God had promised them. And you know, boys and girls, the Israelites had been following Moses for many years through the desert on their way to the promised land. The whole way, those Israelites had been complaining and whining and they complained about anything and everything. One day, a man named Korah, and it's found right in God's word, decided he was going to stand up, rise up against Moses as the leader. And he started complaining against Moses to all the Israelites. And Korah was saying, he had, well, he had a terrible attitude towards Moses, and he got 250 leaders in the community to take his side. Boys and girls, after he got these 250 leaders to take his side, then he went to Moses to complain against him. And he said, we are just as holy as you are. Sorry, boys and girls. We are just as holy as you are. What makes you think you need to be the leader? Well, Moses didn't get mad. Nope. He said, it is the Lord that you and your men are rebelling against. Come back tomorrow. We will both call on God. The one God answers is the one who is really supposed to be leader of the Israelites. So the next day, Moses and his brother Aaron stood before Korah and the 250 leaders. Now, boys and girls, they both lit their incense torches and called on God. All the while, Korah and his men continued to gripe and complain about Moses. And all of a sudden, the ground opened up 
and swallow Cora and four of his friends, and they were never seen or heard of again. And God sent fire from heaven and burned up the rest of the 250 men who had come to Korah to complain. How many of you would agree that it was obviously a pretty dumb idea for Korah and his friends to start complaining against Moses? Well, you're right. But, <clears throat> excuse me, do you want to know an even, dumb, an even dumber idea? It wasn't good enough for the first group. The next day, another group. Another group shows up and starts complaining against Moses. You know, you would think that they would have learned the lesson from the first group to what happened to Korah, but they didn't. Moses and Aaron prayed for God not to kill these people for their wicked attitudes. God had already sent a plague to destroy them, but because of Moses and Aaron's prayers, not everyone was punished, boys and girls. This was an amazing Bible story, and today we're going to learn a valuable lesson from this lesson about how we must be careful to not fall into the trap of complaining, boys and girls. Well, Today we heard a powerful lesson. Let's see what our verse is. Oh, hi boys and girls. Well, it's me, Guinea, the record keeper. Do you want to know one of the world records? Well, it's the longest hot dog. You know how long it was? I do. It was 137 feet. <laughs> well, enough of that. It's time to say the power verse. Today's power verse says, In everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. Philippians 2.14 What an awesome power verse. Now I need some help. Boys, stand up. I want you to say the power verse with me, Guinea, on three. One, two, three. In everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. Philippians 2.14. Great job, boys. Now you can have a seat. Girls, stand up. It's your turn to say the power verse with me, Guinea. One, two, three. In everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. Philippians 2.14 Great job. You can have a seat. Boys and girls, did you know that we're supposed to stay away from complaining and arguing with everything, not just our brothers and sisters and friends? That's what the power verse says. Now that you know that, I want everyone to stand up and say the power verse with me, Guinea, on three. One, two, three. In everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. Philippians 2.14 What a great job you did today, everyone. Have a seat. Well, I've got some more record keeping to do, so ta-ta. Keep your eyes crossed and your noses clean. Bye-bye. <laughs> So boys and girls, Philippians 2.14, in everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. Philippians 2.14. Boys and girls, that is instruction right from the Lord. In everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing. Philippians 2.14. Well, boys and girls, today we did hear a crazy story, didn't we, from the Bible. Korah and his friends, they started their complaining, all right. And then, it, it wasn't very smart that they did that. They were complaining against Moses, and Moses told them, you know, it's not really me that you're complaining against, but you're rebelling against God. Boys and girls, we don't 
need to do that. We have enough problems. We don't need to complain and argue with other people. Well, Cora and his friends suffered a terrible fate, boys and girls, but it, it was even worse. It was dumb for Cora to complain, but it was even more dumb or dumber for the next group of complainers to do the same thing. They should have learned the lesson from Cora. And what lesson was that? Don't be a complainer, boys and girls. A lot of people have the bad habit of complaining. It's even worse when they complain about things in the church. They don't like the way the pastor preaches, so they complain. Or they don't like the songs that are being sung, so they complain. Or they don't like the color of the carpet or the walls, so they complain. They're constantly going around to others and complaining about all the things they don't like. Well, that's not the way God wants us to be. No, instead, boys and girls, he wants us to talk to him. Talk to God about your complaints, not others. You know, maybe there really are things that you're upset about. But rather than going to other people and complaining, talk to God in prayer about these things. Maybe he will give you ideas on how you can fix it. Or better yet, he may show you how you're wrong about the situation altogether. And he may change your attitude about it. Boys and girls, that would certainly be better than complaining and getting a bunch of other people involved in your complaints. You want to know one of the best ways not to become a complainer? I tell you, boys and girls, it's worked for me. Don't hang around other complainers. You tend to become like those that you hang around with. Yes, boys and girls, the 250 people who hung around Cora, yep, guess what? They all became just like Cora. And you know, boys and girls, they all became complainers. If you choose to hang around those people who complain all the time, then you are doing wrong just like they are. Let me explain it to you this way, okay? Let's say that I have a sponge and there's a glass of Kool-Aid. And let's say that that Kool-Aid represents your friends. Now, if you hang around people who are complainers, guess what you're going to hear all the time? You're going to hear all the complaining. And so when you're around others, Think of yourself as a sponge going into that container of Kool-Aid, being your friends. That sponge soaks up all of the stuff that your friends are putting out. You're the sponge. They're the Kool-Aid. They complain. You tend to do the same thing. Boys and girls, all the complaining we've been listening to ends up coming out of our mouths too. When you hang around complainers, you become a complainer. Whatever you soak up is what comes out of your life as well. So instead of being dumb like Cora and complaining all the time, or being dumber like the others who complain despite what they saw happen to Cora, choose to stop complaining. Choose to leave the complaining behind, ask God to forgive you, and never look back. God wants us to use our mouths to bless him and bless others, not complain. Let's choose to do just that. Let's pray, boys and girls. God, I pray that you will help all of us to recognize and realize when we have a complaining spirit. I pray, Lord, that we will never go to others and complain, but instead, God, that we would go to you and ask you to help us, Lord. 
I pray that each one of these munchies would choose to hang around those who will help them use their words for blessing, not for complaining. Lord, I just ask that you would bless each one of them today. Help them, Lord, to choose the right way. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Boys and girls, don't be a complainer. Instead, be someone who is joyful and is happy and is willing to say good things about people instead of bad. You take care, have a good week, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye now.